welcome back. We have our current events panel and joining me again is Mike Patton and Michelle Samard. Okay, we're gonna continue on with this Alberta transgender policy announcement because it seems to be a hot topic. Um, just before we cut to commercial, Mike, we were discussing the flip side of parental rights. Well, what happens when you have parents who want their child to transition? Maybe they had a gender dysphoric child who from an earlier age, you know, really felt they were born the wrong gender or, or whatever jargon is used, but this is truly how they feel. Do they have a right then to advocate for this child to obtain this medical procedure? Well, and this is where it gets very dicey because should parental rights work both ways? It's easy when you agree that a parent should be able to make a decision and that's a good decision for the child. But what if you fundamentally disagree with the parent in the case, you know, again, I, I think hormone blockers are very risky to give to children who haven't reached puberty, but should the parents not have the right to make that decision after a conversation with the child and the doctor? So that's, that may, and I don't know what the answer is to this because it's a very different, this is all very difficult and all brand new, but that really causes me concern that that would be restricted. Yeah, I guess my instinct on this um, is there seems to be rapid onset gender dysphoria now. So kids on mass are now wanting to change genders. It's happening in schools. Nobody cared about this 10 years ago, but now that it's being spoken of so much, it seems to become de rigueur and something that we just discuss. If there's something irreversible, like we've heard that hormonal blockers, they can lead to fertility issues down the road. Is it even appropriate for a parent to want something that's irreversible for their child. At what point is it, I mean, at one point does the child get to decide and we say, yes, at adulthood, that's when you can. We know the child's brain is not fully developed till about 25, the decision-making capacity. I think this is, is, is a real, like if we're being true to the parental rights cause, I think it's, it's, it's a very strange topic and we could discuss this for even other medical treatments. Uh, it doesn't have to be just gender, uh, transgender issues. Now, one of my, the favorite policies that did come out of here, and Michelle will let you discuss this, is that, again, we touched upon it, is that transgender women, so these are biological born men who are now identifying as a female, are no longer going to be allowed to compete in not just girls, but women's sports in Alberta. What is your thought on that, Michelle? Okay, so uh, going back to your point, um, so really at the end of the day is, is that parental rights come through so many things and most people take it for granted. Oh, uh, the school says, can I have a permission to take my kid to a school trip? And a parent's like, yeah, okay, what's a school trip? If there's not any like nuts or allergies or anything that they think their child, yeah, sure, I'll do it. Um, then sometimes school saying like, oh, we're gonna do some photo op. Can you have your kid in there? And the parent can says yes or no. So now it's about uh, a child saying like, well, I don't want to be classified as this person. I want to be classified as this person. And and now the school saying, well, we want to promote that. And I'm sitting there going like, that's fine. But is the parent aware of that? Because at the end of the day, then it's creating a, a dissension within the family unit. So at this point, we don't allow children to vote. We don't let them to drive. So why are we allowing them to make these kind of decisions when society has decided that these decisions should be made when you're in an elder age. And I understand it's hard and discomforting and parents are dealing with children who have major issues, but I think we all deal with that. And at the end of the day, how do we bridge the gap of protecting safety? Because at the end of the day, you haven't had a doctor here, but I'd, be love, I'd love to hear a doctor talk about this. You have a perfectly healthy child, and I know we're running out of time, but we have a perfectly healthy child and you want to remove certain organs in a perfect healthy child. Um, that right. maybe they change their mind. And there's a whole whole other group that says they regret the decisions that they made. And that's never really talked about in media. Mm. Fair enough, fair enough. Let's switch gears. Um, a French man, so a man from France, uh, he uh, is, identifies as Islamic. He interrupted a Catholic mass in Quebec to say his prayers in the church while at the front while mass was going on. Uh, Michael, what, who, what, what's going on here? I mean, I ask this truly uh, because if there's a service in play, I thought it was always the law, and maybe Michelle, you want to chime in, that you can't interrupt a service while it's going on, in this case, a Catholic Mass. Well, as you said, there was a, a Catholic Mass in process, and uh, a, a French citizen who's Muslim entered the church 
and went up to the front and said to the the priest is you know can anybody pray here and the priest said yes and he said okay so i'm going to pray i'm going to do my muslim prayers right here in the front in the middle of your catholic mass and filmed the whole thing because he was looking for a reaction he's a youtuber and this was a, a thing and I don't know that, Tanya, that there's laws about this, but this is just incredibly rude, if nothing okay, else. Okay, pause it there. We're going to talk about this in just a moment.